Uh, we're going to talk about the effect of artificial intelligence on cybersecurity. We're going to do it quickly, and this will be the last thing you will hear this day. Um, um, anyone here deals with uh, artificial intelligence on a regular basis? Please raise your hand. So some people. Uh, CISOs in the audience? Investors in the audience? Please talk to me later. I would like to meet you. Okay, we talk, we're going to talk about artificial intelligence and AI. Yeah, start a presentation. Okay, so as you might know, my name is Manny Bonzilai. I'm a partner at a company called Cytactic. Cytactic is a company that deals with cyber crisis management. We help organizations either to prepare for a crisis or um, manage the crisis the moment it happened. I'm also the CTO of the ICRC, the Interdisciplinary Cyber Research at the Tel Aviv University, uh, which is the, the organization that manages Cyber Week. And we're going to talk about um, artificial intelligence and its effect on uh, cybersecurity. As you know, and if you heard Karen's, Karen Lazari's talk from a few minutes, uh, from a few hours ago, you know that hackers have been very, very, very innovative. And you know that the crime world is looking for new ways to conduct crime and to make crime happen. And this is what we're going to talk about. Okay, so many, Cytactic, the ICRC, this is my newsletter and my website. You can just, you will have it at the end of the presentation as well. And I want to start with a question. Do you guys know who this guy is? Do you know him? Well, this is IBM's Deep Blue. Uh, some of you know him because he is very, very famous because of what? Chess. He played chess against whom? Kasparov. Um, Deep Blue and Kasparov uh, played chess twice, once in 1996 and once in 1997. And the thing is that in 1996, who won? Kasparov. He won four out of five games. And in 1997, who won? Yeah, Deep Blue four out of five games. Um, so this is what happened. A few years back, I was invited to uh, give a talk at a conference in Finland, and um, uh, Kasparov was also there. He was also invited to give a talk at the same conference, and I participated in this event. And he was such a brilliant speaker. And one of the things that he said, he said, you know, the moment I understood that it was all over was in 1997. When I lost, when was it? 1996. Because he said, even if computers can win against a person, even once, if computers can win against the world champion, even once, it's just a matter of time before they will win all the time because computers improve much faster than human beings. And the thing that we must understand is that Gary Kasparov is the last human champion. We will never see human being being born that is able to win against computers in a world of chess. Now, we can still play if it makes us happy to see who is the best human uh, that knows how to play his chess, Magnus Carlsen, obviously, but uh, computers will ever be better. And that's a very important rule, and we will see this rule being applied to cybersecurity, because whenever a computer is becoming better than humans in doing something, the computer will always maintain this lead. And this is going to be very important to the things that we're going to talk about. Now, the basic rule to cybersecurity, this is a basic rule. Everybody in this room knows this rule. Nevertheless, this rule is the engine of the cybersecurity industry. This rule is the reason that cybersecurity will become more and more and more important topic. And this basic rule says that innovation is two-sided coin. Every new technology creates new problems. Every new line, a generation of innovation will force us to create new generation of cybersecurity companies to deal with the threats that this technology brings. And now everybody's so excited about artificial intelligence, generative AI, and those are powerful technologies. And because those are powerful technologies, the risks are actually powerful. And we already see the world of cybercrime being changed those, uh, thanks to those technologies. The guys from Checkpoint did a wonderful job going through the darknet, finding people who talk about ChatGPT. And they found brilliant things, one of which is that people who are in the world of cybercrime for many years, they don't have any technological background, starting to go into generating code using ChatGPT 
in order to try and play with those technologies to see if they can develop malware and other kind of uh, malicious software. So people with no technological background are now have access to this kind of capabilities through ChatGPT. And this is very, very interesting. Um, this is a very interesting uh, warning from uh, the FBI and DOJ, and they say, this is really happening. This is not a potential threat. This is really happening. And they say people are using deepfakes in order to get uh, job interviews for large multinational companies. Usually people from North Korea and those such places will use um, uh, deepfakes and something that will change their voice so they will get an interview with large organizations and they want to get a job there. And this is something very, very dangerous. I like Wired's um, title. They're also always very good with their titles. And their title is Good Luck Not Accidentally Hiring a North Korean Scammer. And this is happening right now. So what we see is that the usage of AI technologies is already in the wild. This is not a theoretical threat. Hackers and criminals are leveraging AI in order to conduct crime. Um, so now we have uh, this. Uh, Froster, this is probably you've heard about that. Uh, in two cases, at least that we know of, Froster's used deepfake voices to mimic CEO's voice, and they use the voice of the CEO to call an employee of the organization, asking the employee to transfer funds from one account to their own account. And it happened twice, once in the UK, where they lost $250,000, and in this case, where they actually lost $35 million. So it's happening. And I think in order to understand this trend and understand why hackers are using AI, we have to start thinking about the world of cybercrime as an industry. This is an industry. We have crime startups, we have crime companies, we have crime as a service, we have crime marketplaces, we have cr uh, crime experts, we have reputation, we have marketing uh, uh, efforts, we have business lines. So this is an industry. And this is a very technological industry. And like every other industry out there, this crime industry is looking for scalability and innovation. And they're looking for barrier removal. And they're looking for a lot of things to add to their world. They want to leverage crime. They want to scale crime. They want to make it easy. They want to make it less risky. And this is why we see so much innovation in the world of cybercrime. A brilliant talk that was given by this team uh, in Black Hat several years ago, and they did something interesting. They actually developed um, an algorithm called SNAP, uh, SNAP R, and it stands for Social Network Automated Phishing with Reconnaissance. And this algorithm publishes tweets on Twitter, and their goal was to fool people to click a malicious link. And they wanted to make it a competition, so they challenged this guy. This is an, a professional writer for Forbes, so his business is writing things. And they said, okay, we're going to do a competition. You will publish tweets, we will publish tweets, and we will see who is able to make more people, to fool more people to click malicious links. And he said, sure, this is my job. A computer will never move in. And both of them actually published tweets, and a lot of things happened, and this is eventually, um, this is eventually summarizing what happened. So you see, his, the person's ability to make people cl uh, click uh, maliciously was 49 people fell for his um, links, while 275 people fell for Snap R. And this is a very interesting matrix that I think everybody should know and everybody should understand. On the y-axis, what we see is the success rate. On the x-axis, the level of effort. And what we have here is traditional phishing. It doesn't require a lot of effort, but the success rate is very low. On the top right, we see spear phishing. So it requires a lot of effort, but the success rate is really, really high. And now we have all of those automation technologies, crime automation technologies, where you don't need to spend a lot of effort, you just click a button, but the success rate is very, very, very high. And this is the problem. This is the world we're going to, where crime is being something which is very simple to use, very simple to execute. And this is exactly what you get. Scalability, you get automation, ease of use, removal of barriers, reduced risk, everything. This is why we see the crime industry uh, flourish with today's reality. Now, we have to talk about DARPA. You're familiar with DARPA. Uh, they used to be called ARPA, and you know about ARPA because of the ARPANET, which became the internet as we know it today. DARPA, and they added the D for defense, 
has something they call grand challenges. I'm not sure if you heard about the grand challenges. They have the grand challenges. Their ever first grand challenge was in 2004. And what they said, we want you to create autonomous system, an, an autonomous car. And this car has to drive 300 miles through the desert, through the desert, no peasants, no people, no trees, no nothing, through the desert from point A to point B. And they challenged, and a lot of teams participated in this uh, challenge. Um, and that happened in 2004, <clears throat> 2004, their first challenge ever. No one won. No one was able to travel these 300 miles. It's amazing how much the world have evolved since then. In 2005, they did the same challenge, and then we had a winner. But lately, a few years ago, they did another grand challenge, CGC, Cyber Grand Challenge. And again, they wanted people to build autonomous systems. But now those autonomous systems should hack organizations and should hack environments. And this was a competition between different teams. Each team should build their own autonomous hacking system. And those systems should compete one against another. And for two years, they had this competition. And the end of the competition, the, 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 the pinnacle, the, the, the moment where they had to declare who's the winner happened in DEF CON, in the DEF CON 24. And they made a whole a whole party out of it. It was like a show showroom. It was like a, a, a sport game. And you can see all of those seven uh, finalists who reached to this competition. And they uh, competed one against each other in a game of CTF, Capture the Flag. Who will be the first computer who will be able, able to overcome a CTF challenge, Capture the uh, Flag challenge? And this was, <clears throat> this was the winner, Mayhem. This was the winner, the computer that after two years of challenges reached first place, and this computer was able to overcome a very complicated CTF challenge. And the guys from DEFCON were so excited about that, so they wanted the computer to participate in another CTF. <coughs> Sorry, but this CTF is for humans, because I don't know if you know that, but the most famous CTF challenge in the world is happening in DEF CON once a year in Las Vegas. The best teams from everywhere are coming there for three days, not leaving their workstation. They're trying to hack an environment. And they said, wow, this was so cool. Let's take the computer and take, make him participate in this human against human competition. And Mayhem uh, reached uh, the competition. And what do you think happened? Mayhem lost. He actually reached the last place. But it's not just that. It's actually something very interesting. When Mayhem lost, it's not like he was completely lost. His ranking was kind of OK. And more than that, actually for two days during the three days competition, there were some teams who were behind Mayhem. So Mayhem did kind of a good job. Even though he lost, he did kind of a good job. And what we need to think about, or we need to realize, that for us, this is the 1996 of computer hacking. And 1997 is coming. And what we're going to see is we're going to see autonomous hacking systems. So those systems, with a click of a button, will know how to execute the complete kill chain. They will know how to identify victims, um, to develop real websites, to add reputations to those websites by actually promoting fake news, to build relationships through ChatGPT and chat engines, to create fake personas, to send malicious software that they will develop themselves, to make people exploit those things, to find the crown jewels, to steal this information, and actually do everything automatically. Now, it's true, there is no one system that knows how to do it all right now. But each and every element that is needed in order to make this happen is already here. In different systems, those systems are not connected. And sometimes you still need a human to help in the process. But all the parts, all the needed parts are there. At a certain point, we will see the world of cybercrime, which is an industry, very innovative, very smart industry, being able to connect the dots, taking all of those different technologies, connecting them into an autonomous hacking system. And my point, and I'm running forward because we don't have time, my time is absolutely over. Uh, this is things that I've done with AI, proving that I can do that. Um, my point is the world of cybersecurity is gonna, yeah, it's 24 hours presentation if you didn't know. Um, the world of cybersecurity is gonna look like that in the years to come. Like that. 
because we're not AI ready. And when hackers will start leveraging uh, malicious AI, autonomous hacking systems, we will be in a very big problem because our IT environment is super vulnerable and we don't have time, effort, experts, and budget in order to fix our current IT environment. So uh, this is my prediction. In a very short time, AI will do very good to cybersecurity. In the medium uh, term, uh, we will see a lot of big problems. And where is the future? I don't know, but we are in charge on how the future will look like. We need very talented people to go into artificial intelligence and cybersecurity and invent the next big thing. Thank you so much. Guys, with that, the first day of Cyber Week, uh, the main plenary is over. Uh, we're going to see you tomorrow. There are still events here at the Tel Aviv University, but we're going to see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for being here for the last session of the day. You are amazing. Enjoy Israel if you came from abroad, and I'll see you tomorrow.